Good morning and happy Monday, everybody. Happy Columbus Day as well. That's the joy of doing what we do is we get the choice to work today or to not work today. You know, that's the great part about working in health insurance and being self-employed. Obviously, we're working because we're coming up to open enrollment and we're getting ready for that. So today, we're going to talk more about how to effectively follow up specifically in open enrollment, but let's just start with some quick stats. So taking a look here, it says 48% of salespeople will never follow up. 25% of salespeople will make a second contact and stop. 12 will make three contacts and 10% will make more than three. 2% of sales are made on the first contact, 3% on the second, 5% on the third, 10% on the fourth, and then everything else is made between fifth and 12th. Kind of important, talking about follow-up, talking about effective follow-up specifically. We are about to become so busy, so inundated with different types of leads that we need to work our time effectively and smart. So that's kind of what today is going to talk about as we roll up to open enrollment. The next few Motivation Mondays are all going to be specifically aimed at what we can do to get ready. So happy Columbus Day and let's get this moving. So happy Motivation Monday, and I can see we have, do have, again, a few new people on the call, so we'll quickly go through what we cover. So the point behind Motivation Monday is that it's a quick 20, 30-minute call that's going to get you ready for the week. We're going to start out with doing a quick tip of the week. We'll go through some HCP trends so you can see what is being sold out there. We'll see who's leading and what they're selling, and in the end, we're going to end with a quick 10-minute sales technique, which today is effective follow-up. So taking a look at the tip of last week, everybody was asking me, where can I uh, find any of the previous carrier videos that I've gone over and where can I find previous Motivation Mondays? It's going to be kind of an important thing today as well because we're going to be pulling things from previous Motivation Mondays. So if you do have any questions or anything where that is located, it's located at hcpsales.com, so the website that you should be at pretty much all day, in the training section in the pre-recorded video library. So click on that. It'll take you to all the different ones we're there. So if you had questions on maybe some self-funded programs, if you're having issues with your quote net gen and trying to figure that out, click on those. You can go through uh, you know, how to build personal referral bases, time management techniques. Everything that we've covered with carriers and on Motivation Mondays will be put into there. It's actually hosted on our YouTube channel as well. And if you've not checked out the YouTube channel, absolutely go through it. So the tip of this week is kind of a little different one. Um, there's been a lot of information sent out about this last week, so I thought, hey, let's do kind of a quick review. So one of the big things coming up is, you know, we're going to be talking to clients who are, oops, let's jump back one quick. We're going to be talking to clients who are sitting there and uh, who got tax subsidies the year before. So one thing to do now, quick tip of the week, is start reaching out to those clients because if you know they're going to get tax subsidies and you may not be selling a ton of ancillary on, their, on those policies, they're not going to be worth too much of your time you know, as far as it goes because those are kind of easy ones. We know exactly what's going to happen with major medical. We know how those plans work. So it's kind of important to sit down now with those clients who are getting tax credits and let them know, yeah, yes, the marketplace is going to be a mess again this year. Many carriers pulled out. This is kind of a record as far as it goes this year for the number of carriers who pulled out for 2017. We have a record low number. And uh, the ones that have left it have actually altered their plan designs, leaving really bad plan designs. Yes, they still meet the actual, ver actual value that is needed to be on the exchange. But what they're doing is that they are putting the non as um, benefit robust plans on the exchange. And those plans off the exchange are a little better. So let them know about that. It's a good thing to do as well as get the needs assessment out of the way now. So with any of those clients that you have sold in the past, uh, since basically major medicals are 12 months short terms, it seems like now, everybody is picking different ones coming up here starting November. Do those clients now. Do the needs assessment now. That way you can just knock those out in the first few days of open enrollment and leave yourself time to do more prospecting as far as it goes with new customers that may you know, be better for those ancillary products. So kind of a quick tip of the week. Now to take a look at the trends. So we had a great increase in major medical and that's going to keep going up until open enrollment and then it's just gonna fly through the roof. Uh, last week it was a big Aetna week as well as a really healthy increase in short-term medical too. That's saying that people are actually able to determine the difference between do you need a major medical? Do you have pre-existing conditions? Is this something that is really important to you? To short-term medical, which is, is uh, having a cheaper plan more effective to you because 
pretty much they're going to have the same deductible base. A lot of them, as long as they don't have a lot of pre-ex, are going to offer fairly similar benefits. The only difference is major medical costs about three times as much. So it's healthy to see a good growth in both of those, as well as a good growth in accidents. So really good with the National General NHIC and then VBA as well. And with critical illness and dental, those both went pretty steady, as funny as it is. It's about one policy growth on each, so nothing too crazy there. Uh, again, leading with CBL, we seem to love the CBL with critical illness, and you know, as we should. It's a great product. It pays great. It's really great for the clients. The claims are easy. The sales process is easy. As well with dental, VBA. So general agent center there as far as it goes. Taking a look at the sales shout outs this week, I'm not going to be too shocked when I say the first name, Brian Jarvitz. Good job in the short term medical category. NHIC leading again. David Michael Taxer taking the silver in the short term medical category as well with NHIC. Jacob Gordon there, golden rule. Doing strong, kind of leading his own little chart, but kudos to all three of you. Uh, fairly similar names that keep going up and up, and uh, they're keeping uh, the front line pretty strong for us. Ancillary. Brian Jarvitz again, who had an outstanding, almost record-breaking week of trio med sales. So really attaching those trio meds to his short-term medical policies, every sale that he's making, literally almost every sale that he's making. If that's something you're not doing, take a look at it. Anything that was not short-term was really a CBL week. Uh, Chris Helgerson with the NHIC accident and really strong trio med as well, and then ending with David Michael Taxer there with the CBL and critical illness. So good, good week, guys. Really strong. Awesome numbers and really good attachment rates. One of those things that we try to hit as far as it goes with ancillary, if you want to have a really solid paycheck and you really want to make sure your customer is as covered as possible, is two ancillary products to everyone short term or major medical. So those are the things to keep in mind. Really good sales shout out. And as we said before, the point behind Motivational Monday is for us to be brief, be bright, and be gone. So we're going to jump right into effective follow-up there for the open enrollment period. So we're going to continue talking about open enrollment. We'll talk about it for the next few weeks, really preparing for that busy time of year with a few strategies. One of the biggest things for us to know is that we are going to be very, very busy, basically starting at actually the end of this week. Usually, statistically, it picks up on the 15th. So today's the 10th. So looking at, you know, Friday or Saturday, it's going to happen. So we need to focus on maximizing our time. One of the biggest things for us as agents is we'll spend a lot of our time uh, doing follow-up calls. So it's really how can we do this effectively? One of the biggest things that happens is that your client will get so inundated with calls is that the client will shut down. And our job here is really to be persistent and to help get that job done. So interesting fact is that only 2% of sales close on the first call, as we saw. Kind of mind-blowing and that 43% of salespeople give up after the first call. So the concept that this wasn't a good lead, not a qualified lead, not someone I should spend my time on and be done with them, that really occurs. We've all been there, uh, myself especially, more times than I care to share with you. But with this open enrollment, we need to put a bit of effort into those hard leads to get things taken care of. Those can be the most profitable customers. The ones that you work a little harder for are more likely the customers that are going to tell their friends. That is how you start getting personally developed leads. Those easy ones, hey, guess what? They could go do that easy sell with almost anybody. But those that you actually spend the time to educate, to learn, and to help are going to be the ones that are going to help kind of build your, um, I call them PDLs, personally developed leads, that your PDL, uh, kind of your base for that. So follow-up is key in our industry and, how, and with how people's lives change and why they need insurance, that's huge. So keep in mind, November 1st is the first day to buy health insurance first day, not the last day, right? The beginning is very important, but really it's how you end is what you're going to care about. Most companies don't take the premiums out, you know, till the very end of 16, early of 17, which means they're not going to pay commissions till the client pays. So this leaves a huge area for your client to start shopping. Uh, the marketplace is having a huge change in plans this year, kind of as we talked about. So this is the year that the clients should shop. Uh, you need to make them those calls count. If you've been taking a look at anything, you'll see these bronze plans that are on the marketplace this year, which are what people are going into. Um, people will go and try to shop online before talking to you. It's the way it works. This is how the game is played. It's confusing, especially with those plans this year on the marketplace. So we're kind of lucky. We should be busier with how disorganized everything is. So with everything else being disorganized, we need to be organized. And um, especially with how many times you've reached out, 
it's a very amateur move in open enrollment because of how busy it is uh, just to get sloppy. I've, I can tell you for, I've obviously been in health insurance way before open enrollment even really started. It's amateur to get sloppy. People will do it. You got to keep organizing. You have to keep on top of your game these next three months. This is when it's going to count. So looking at research uh, by Society for Marketing Professionals and Services uh, from Lead Simple, look at the third contact. 80% of salespeople have given up, especially during open enrollment. Be organized. First off, put your leads in groups, section your time, work those groups. The longer you work them and the smaller they'll be from the yeses and nos, as we can pull them out, as you know, Zig Ziglar used to say, we can take a no as graciously as a yes, but we can't take a maybe. And it's important to keep working them. Look at what it says too. By contact five, you get to know the needs. This is important in our industry, especially with those people who are going to give us uh, personally developed leads. So kind of what can we do? What are we gonna talk about? We're gonna talk about how to focus on the top of the funnel, the quick hits, uh, the impact of making another call. So those kind of stragglers, how are we gonna pick those off? and then kind of doing lead nurturing beyond the initial conversation. So here's the sales funnel. So if we take a look at why, just the concept of why we need to follow up on leads and who we spoke to, if you think that you just contact 82% of your leads and schedule around 50%, what happens if you raise the small stat just a bit, right? If you can just raise just the contacted and raise the meeting, that's going to expand at the bottom of your funnel, which is really your paycheck. <laughs> the, the one, that is your close rate, is what you want to expand. Easiest way to expand it is to expand at the top, right? A lot of people want to play closing techniques. They want to play that bat. They want to play overcoming objections, beating people over the head. Not as effective as, hey, guess what? If you work just a little bit harder on how you're going to contact, you're going to expand your close rate, just the way the game works. I do know that all of us have basically seen Finding Nemo by now, especially if you have kids, you've probably seen it more times than you want to share. So it is statistically proven that if you just keep dialing, you will have a better chance of contacting someone and in turn raising your set rate. But again, it's effort. Kind of the just keep dialing, just keep dialing if you're thinking of Dory there. And tenacity is huge, especially during open enrollment, knowing that people have so much thrown on their plate at once. Um, have you ever talked with a friend about what they know about health insurance? If you haven't, and don't laugh, I actually like to do this. It's called fresh eyesing. It lets me know what the common person knows. If you're calling as a stranger, asking somebody, hey, so what do you know about this extremely complex situation that I'm really well educated in, and they don't know anything, more than likely they're going to avoid you, even if they've reached out for help. Why? People admitting that they don't know about something is hard. So what this graph is showing is the probability of making contact on not giving up. If you're sitting there during open enrollment, the, uh, the big slumps are usually right around Thanksgiving time and the middle two weeks of December. That's when you should be really hitting those calls, trying to make contact. So just to help with the effort thought, so 50% of qualified leads are not ready to buy and half of the sales happen after the fifth call. So let's go through some quick takeaways that we can do. Um, to stay in front of the leads without being an annoyance. That's the biggest part. Everybody talks about, hey, you need a call, you need a call. Why? How? It's easy to say keep calling, but it's really the how that we're going to care about to make OEP happen. So we're going to build out a contact schedule. That's really important, and it's the way you should be working your leads. We're going to go over a quick multi-point touch system for leads that should help with those super active leads, get knocked off right away. Those are the ones that are willing to buy, but also those passive leads, those that are still shopping, those that need some love and more hand-holding. What's going to be really important is keeping organized. And if it is something that you are not organized with, if you don't have a good customer records management or a good way of tracking your leads, reach out. I mean, you have literally 20 days to open enrollment starts, well, 21, 31 in October here. We have great systems internally that we can kind of lead you to, give you some examples. Tammy or myself are more than willing to help you out with this. So let's go through this. We're going to go through the different touch point systems, kind of the why, the where, and the when. And we can talk about how you can use it doing a good, keeping your leads organized. So right away, with day one, what are you going to do? You get the fresh lead. We all know what we do. We call them right away, obviously. No big thing, nothing too mind-blowing. But leave a voicemail on the first call. 
I can't tell you how many salespeople I know who call right away, they don't answer, click, I'll turn back in 10 minutes. What are you doing? Um, leave a voicemail, why most people don't answer their phone anymore without knowing who's calling. I'm on that boat as well, you know. I'm, I'm very busy throughout my day, like all of us are. If we see the random number, we're like doing something else, we're not gonna answer it right away. They have to leave a voicemail. So do a call, leave a voicemail, first thing. Then your that folder is marked contact one. So you're gonna start keeping your leads organized. These are the people who I first contacted. The voicemail should say what we went through in our voicemail training. And again, if you have not watched that video, it's a quick five minute video on hcpsales.com about how to do an effective voicemail that's short enough for your client that they'll actually listen, well, long enough to get the point of cross on why they should call you back. After you leave a voicemail, you should also be sending out an email. A big important thing is having pre-built email templates that are gonna say who you are and what you can do for your client, especially right away. The first email you're gonna send is going to be a general introduction, kind of giving them a concept of, I'm a, health, I'm a licensed health and uh, life sales insurance agent. My job is to help people guide them to the right plan. I'm contracted with multiple companies so I can lead you to the right area. That's kind of a great thing. So again, everything here needs to be quick and to the point. You need to keep it professional and personally branded, like in our Branding Motivation Monday that we talked about. And again, if you haven't seen that one again, it's about a 10 minute video on hcpsales.com. We'll talk about how to do pre-built templates for your emails. So that's called contact two. So once you do those initial calls, you send out that second email, contact two, move it to the contact two folder. Here's a trick. So you do the call, you send the email, wait 30 minutes to an hour to call again. Why, if you get two calls in a day from a number you don't know, way better chance of answering it. Once you did the second call, don't leave a voicemail, you're done. That's basically your contact three. Move that into your next folder. You're done for the day with that lead. Don't overcall, don't beat them up, because next thing you know, you're gonna be called a harasser. Not a good idea. So, no luck on day one, not the end of the world. If it is great luck on day one, good for you. Day one, day two, and day three are where we're gonna start picking up our easy fruits, the ones that, you know, aren't a ton of work. So, for day two, you're gonna give them a call again, and you're gonna call during those prime times, like we talked about two weeks ago. So you, you, know, you call right away in your prime time in the morning and you leave a voicemail about not being able to reach them. And knowing that insurance is important, that you are a licensed agent that is contracted with many carriers and you're gonna be here to help. This voicemail will have a bit more meat. There you go, bam, contact four. Now you're gonna make another call, this one later at the end of the day. Um, well, not really at the end of the day, more in the middle of the day, that's a lunch hour call. Um, it's kind of a nice one to do, starts getting them you know, used to you calling gets to you them used to you reaching out. Day three, if you still haven't contacted them, day three is easy. It's a really easy. Going to give them a call during a prime time, move them to contact six, and send an email in the middle of the day as well. Why? Lunchtime and people are bored and they are checking their email like mad. There's a lot of statistics on when to call and when to do emails. You know, we talked about the, the call statistics. But when to do emails, there are gonna be times when people are bored and they're sitting there checking their emails on their phones. If you're sitting there and you're trying to get them to look at emails, you know, kind of between 10 and 11 o'clock, most people aren't gonna be free to do emails. Most people check the email right away in the morning. They're gonna check it during their lunch hour, when they get home from work and then before bed. That are the common months. That's when you should be sending those emails. Now you're gonna skip a day. Um, this should help weed out those impulsive buyers, those the early strategies to catch them. That's why we kind of do a lot of contacting, a lot of front end work. And now it's, we're gonna start focusing on those that need time for a decision. Day five is a call and voicemail about trying to reach them again and how you are here to help. It's important to leave voicemails that makes you professional. Seriously look at how to leave an effective voicemail training. I can't tell you how many voicemails I get that are 42 minutes long. And the person that's telling me their lifelong story and I just don't care. You know, our, our job as salespeople is to be quick, it's very quick, very precise. Let the client make the decision and be done with it. You know, you have to be quick with your voicemails. You have to make them count. Day eight, now you are skipping three days, right? Kind of mind blowing. Day eight, that will be call number, call contact number nine and email contact 10 now. And this is where most salespeople give up, right? And we are not doing that. We are here to go for the gold. So we're gonna wait a few days, we're gonna skip about a week, and it's gonna be day 14. This is when you're gonna start being able to love to hold those leads that are important to you. You know, I love the lead concept of love the one you're with. 
So it's kind of an important one. So call and leave a voicemail. This one will actually be super quick to the point. Uh, they're more likely to listen to the really, really quick ones, especially when you're about this far out, because they have been beaten up by other lead people more than likely by this time if it's a non-exclusive lead. Day 15 is going to be an email contact, and day 20 is a contact and voicemail. This one is kind of a fun one that will get you a little bit of response. So what you'll do on the very last day is that you're going to be leaving a voicemail about closing out their folder or closing out their file. This is important to tell them because for them they're going to think, oh shoot, you know, I've missed the boat. I need to really call this person back and work it. So the very last one is just letting them know, hey, you know, I've been trying to reach you over these past few weeks. I haven't been had a chance to reach you. I'm going to be closing out your file now. If that is something you don't like me to do, here's my contact information. Again, don't ask them to call you back because if you tell somebody to do something, they're more than likely not to. Now don't throw the lead away. I like to keep a little bucket of leads. I call them free pooling. Uh, that's what I do in my free time is I jump into the pool and start working through some leads. Again, if anyone ever is asked to be removed at any point through this process, do it. Um, stay professional. Uh, just keep moving on to the next step. Keep contacting them if they don't say. But a big thing is if you do talk to somebody on day three, always get the agreement to try back. Always get an agreement. That way you are being a professional and not an annoyance. Again, touch points, you need to be professional, you have to have quality, and you're going to be really surprised by the results. It's a really strong follow-up process used by a lot of different sales agents out there. So kind of some quick to-dos that are going to help everything be a little more effective than what we went through. Big thing, organize your leads into folders. That was the biggest thing that's going to help you. If you don't have a way to organize your leads and folders, please reach out. We can help guide you to some information. We can help guide you to the right systems. Tammy and I have, have, since we have the opportunity of working with so many different carriers, we've seen so many different customer record managers. We'll make sure that you're going in the right direction. Voicemail scripts as well. Listen to the voicemail training. Make yourself some scripts. If you want to work effectively in open enrollment and do things as quick as possible, make them a little more automated in your head. Have the voicemail script out. Be organized. Have those email templates out as well so you can shoot quick emails so you're not sitting there creating them every time. That way your emails are going to be concise, professional, and going the same exact way. And the biggest thing is you need to be the brand of what you can do. You need to make sure on every contact, every time you reach out to a new lead, that you are expressing what you can do as a sales agent with your voicemail scripts, what you can do with your email templates is why they should work with you. Again, the big whiff them is what's in it for me as the client, why should I care about you? So. Those are some quick techniques as far as it goes for follow-up during open enrollment period. I know that that big multi-point touch system is going to be extremely effective. Now, if you have any trainings, you want to get a copy of the multi-point touch system, you have questions on where to get those voicemail emails, feel free to reach out. The email address is at the bottom there. It's training at hcpsales.com. Guaranteed if you have a question, about 15 other people do as well. The email will go directly to me. You can say, hey, trainer Dan, I have a few questions for you. If I can't get back to you in time, Tammy definitely will jump in and do that for you as well. And I thought we'd end with a pretty fun quote here. Success happens when you make a decision and follow it, with, follow it up with an action. Back up to the top. Success means action. Super important. Well, I hope those quick hits help you. Again, reach out if you need anything. Have a really strong Monday. Let's get ready for open enrollment and let us know how we can help. Happy Motivation Monday, everyone.